This laptop just got a new upgrade allowing you to go from Intel to AMD. It's the same framework laptop that launched in 2021, originally shipping with 11th generation Intel processors, since then we've seen upgrade paths to 12th and 13th generation Intel processors. But now it has the ability to jump ship, from Intel to AMD Ryzen, giving this laptop more performance than it's seen before. And the upgrade is easier than you think. I've already covered Frameworks unparalleled upgradability in the past, however they've sent over a few new things for us to have a look at. Inside, this laptop is just as we left it from the original video, taking only seconds to open thanks to its easily accessible design. Modular parts, QR code instruction manuals and colour coded screws are just a few of this laptop's standout features. I will again be using the included screwdriver and spudger combo tool this being the only tool required for this upgrade. One connector and three screws is all it takes to remove the battery, which we'll get out before working on removing the motherboard. There are four cables, two antenna wires and a Wi-Fi card to detach before the five screws securing the board in place. One of this laptop's drawbacks is a lack of a socketed CPU. The simple fact is they don't make socketed laptop CPUs anymore, the only way to get this functionality would be through the use of a desktop processor, like some gaming laptops use. But that means a thicker laptop with more cooling required and greater power consumption, leading to a heavy laptop with short battery life. So while a soldered on CPU is not perfect, it does allow for the ability to switch to a competitor's processor, something no socket would allow you to do. This board has been made to the same footprint as previous motherboards available for this laptop, making it a drop-in replacement. Other than the obvious processor change, there are some noticeable differences. This includes a different heatsink and the lack of a CMOS battery, rather it's being replaced with just a connector, where we can connect an optional battery. I'll get our SSD transferred across before installing some RAM. I had planned on using the RAM from the Intel board, however it doesn't fit, as this AMD version is using newer, faster DDR5 memory, whereas the Intel system was using DDR4. This means we'll have to purchase new memory alongside the motherboard. But don't worry, we have a smart way to reuse our outgoing motherboard and RAM, which we'll look at later. For now, it's time to get this laptop reassembled. It's recommended to replace the Wi-Fi card to an AMD compatible one while performing this upgrade. However, I'll be leaving the Intel Wi-Fi card in place to see what happens. There are known incompatibilities with some new Intel Wi-Fi cards. This one being a Wi-Fi 6E card known as the AX210. I'll get the battery reinstalled before attaching the top case. At this point, I noticed there were two lights blinking red indicating something wasn't quite right. It turns out this is just because the keyboard is lifted up from the computer which had automatically switched itself on with our new motherboard installed. Booted back into Windows we can see we now have an AMD Ryzen 7. As for that Wi-Fi card I did have to reconnect to my Wi-Fi network but it did work without issue. With new hardware comes new drivers. I'll run Frameworks driver installation software and get everything up and running. Now I'm no performance measuring channel, but I wanted to see if there was any expected increase in performance from the new AMD system. I got a few fail results before settling out at about 10,000 for a multi-core score, a 2,900 point jump from the Intel version. As for graphics, it's an 82% increase. Regardless of your thoughts on the benchmarking software I've used here, I do believe there will be a noticeable performance increase in day-to-day -day tasks with this new AMD system. Though I will swap in the new Wi-Fi card and get the laptop reassembled. You might have noticed I left the battery attached while doing this. This was done on purpose as this laptop has been designed so that it can be upgraded while the battery is still attached. This isn't something you should try on anything unless it's advertised. With the screws fastened and the ports reinstalled, the upgrade is complete. But what about the old motherboard and Wi-Fi card? They're still perfectly functional, and while you could sell them, you can now also easily build another computer, thanks to a new motherboard case. 
To get a usable system, you'll also need a Wi-Fi antenna if you plan to use Wi-Fi, and an audio board if you'd like audio. You could get creative and fit another Wi-Fi antenna, or use one of the USB-C ports for audio. The choice is yours. Unlike the laptop, this case is made entirely of plastic. It would have been nice to see an aluminium version, maybe in the future. What I find amusing is that this motherboard case is secured with plastic clips rather than just screws, making it technically harder to open than the laptop itself, although in reality it's fine. I'll need to get the antenna installed first, as its wires run under the motherboard. This antenna is the exact one found in the laptop, so if you had a parts laptop lying around, you could reuse it here. Because we swapped the SSD during the upgrade, we'll need to install a new one into this motherboard before getting it installed into the new case. All the screws we need and the bracket for the Wi-Fi card is included with the new case. I found it was best to attach the cables before installing the card. So as we've discovered, you can build another computer out of your old board, but you'll need to find or purchase some parts to make it all work. If you have a friend or family member who is after a desktop computer, this might be a way to save money by not having to buy a second computer, or a way to subsidize the cost of your new upgrade by selling it to them. And that's all there is to the internals, so the top cover can now be attached. Just like when it was installed in the laptop, the motherboard accepts Frameworks expansion cards. We'll need to install the appropriate cards for our setup. In my case, I'll be using USB-C for power and HDMI for display output, but I'll install a USB-A card so I can connect a keyboard and mouse. You could do away with the Wi-Fi card in favor of an Ethernet adapter or the audio board for an audio card. However, each of these takes up one of the four available slots. Of course, without a battery, we'll need to power it directly from the wall, using its original charger. With everything plugged in, we can start the laptop by pressing the power button on the top of the case. This laptop is smart enough to know you're running without a display or battery, but it allows you to enable standalone operation and remove those warning messages. With a new SSD, it's time for a new installation of Windows. Once it's up and running, we now have our secondary device. I like how they were able to turn a negative of having to replace the whole motherboard for a CPU upgrade into a positive by making it easy to turn it into a second computer. The whole package looks like a handheld game console. There are two holes where the antenna attaches internally, which I can only assume is for if you wanted to add an attachment for an external antenna. The case does come with a stand, however it can be mounted to the back of a monitor using this standard VESA mount on the back. With that, we've upgraded the most repairable laptop on the market from Intel to AMD and repurposed its motherboard to make a second computer. Of course, it's not perfect. You have to deal with Windows's activation error after a motherboard replacement, and the new AMD board has some interesting port configurations. USB 4 is supported on the rear ports, while only USB 3.2 is on the front ports. And display port output is only for three out of the four ports. A little confusing and something you may have to memorize if you buy one of these with the AMD configuration. But Framework continues to raise the bar higher when it comes to a repairable laptop, soon to release a larger display model that features an upgradable GPU, something I'll be looking at soon. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the Teardown and Repair Assessment playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.